Okay, I'm recording this video for my GCSE electronics students, but it would be probably useful for anyone who's just starting out learning about a D-type flip-flop, which is this thing here. Okay, so let's get started and uh, let's have a look at some of these pins. So D is the data input. This one here, this triangle is the clock. S is the set. R is reset. Now, when we haven't got those uh, connected at the moment. More about those in another lesson. And then we've got Q, which is an output. And then we've got this thing here. Uh, this wave symbol is called tilde. Not that you need to know that. But that's um, tilde means not. So it's not Q. And also this circle here means the same thing. It means not. So in actual fact, um, the this output here, not Q, is actually always the inverse of Q. So, for example, if the output is of Q is zero, then the output of not Q will be one, and vice versa. Okay, so the D-type flip-flop is uh, what we call rising edge triggered. Now, what rising edge triggered means is that the uh, data input or the, uh, the whatever we've got here, whether it's a logic high or a logic low. It's actually going to get transferred to the output queue when the voltage at the clock rises from a logic low to a logic high. Now you can present anything you like at the data input, but the data will only get transferred on the rising edge of the clock. So I've already set this circuit up as you can see. I've got uh, two switches there. That's going to, when, when either of these are pressed, they take the inputs either the data input or the clock input to a logic high. Uh, you can see that, hopefully you can see that because I've also got pull down resistors. So when those switches are in an open state, the voltage will be pulled down low. Okay, so let's just uh, run the simulation. And it's quite useful actually to, if you're using circuit wizard as I am here, to view logic levels. So you can see at the moment, like the nine volt supply will be equivalent to a logic high and the ground would be a logic low. And then because of these pull down resistors, both the data input and the clock input are at logic low. Now, um, when uh, this uh, simulation started, it has started with Q being logic low or zero and not Q therefore being one. That's what we call the reset state. So if we were ever to use a reset pin and we were to reset the D-type flip-flop would actually expect Q to be zero and not Q to be one. But if you were actually making this uh, in a real world circuit, you'd actually have to include some circuitry to ensure using reset pin that this started in this state, if that was important to you. But we'll leave that for another lesson. Okay, so um, I think I mentioned earlier that the D, the data input pin, gets transferred or can get transferred to the output Q. So if, for example, I were to press the switch, you'll notice even though I'm going, say, logic low, logic high, logic low, logic high, hopefully you're looking there, you'll see that absolutely no, no transfer is ha happening uh, to the output Q because the transferring is only going to take place on a rising edge of the clock. So if at the moment I've got a a data input of zero when the clock goes high like that the zero got transferred to the output well it's already zero so you won't actually see anything happening now um, I well, would find it difficult probably impossible to actually be able to click this uh, button and this one at the same time so I've assigned uh, shortcut keys to them if you don't know how to do that by the way let's just double click and I've just assigned a key and I did C for the clock and D for the data because that makes sense. And so now I can use the keyboard so you won't see my mouse moving to click these uh, switches but um, anyway it's the same thing. So let's just run the simulation now. So this time I'm going to um, press uh, the D key so that brings my data input to a logic high and notice the output Q is zero but I'm then going to press the uh, clock uh, push switch here, which is then going to bring this to uh, the, the clock input to logic high. Now, as the logic level rises from a zero 
uh, to a one or from a logic low to a logic high, if you want to call it like that, uh, then the data, whatever the data is here, is going to get transferred. So let's try that. So hopefully you see that that got transferred. Now I'm just going to take my finger off the data and nothing changes because remember I can change that data as much as I like, but data doesn't get transferred un uh, until or at the point of the rising edge of the clock. So bearing in mind that the data input is currently zero on the next rising edge of the clock, that zero is going to be get transferred to the output like that. Hopefully you saw that down here the LED alternated from one thing to another. Remember you can't have these two, um, you can't have Q and not Q being the same thing because they're actually the opposites of each other. So let's say I wanted to get this LED a light again on the output Q. I would need to raise the data to a logic high or logic true or one. So let's do that. And then I need to briefly bring the well, it doesn't have to be briefly, but it can be very briefly. Uh, bring the clock high, so that's on the rising edge of the clock. Uh, and then I've released my key, uh, my finger, off the, uh, the shortcut key for the data. And it makes no difference to the output of the game, because remember, the transferring of data only happens on the rising edge of the clock. Now, um, hopefully that will make sense. If you're using Circuit Wizard, you might want to use a logic analyzer. Now you can find that by going down to the bottom here, go to Test Instruments, add a logic analyzer here. Now a logic analyzer is used, uh, as you can probably guess, for analyzing logic levels in circuit. And that's all we're really interested in in a circuit. We're not really actually interested in voltages. We're interested in logic. Uh, ons and offs, ones and zeros. And so I'm only going to use three channels here. There's uh, what, uh, 16 channels there. So I'm going to first of all have channel zero connected to the data. And I think I'll have channel one connected to the clock. And I'll have channel two connected to the output queue. I'm not going to bother to have a channel connected to output not Q because I know that uh, not Q will just be the inverse of Q. You need to also right click here, choose add graph and draw yourself a little graph here. Uh, to give myself more room I'm going to uh, close that and extend this out a little bit more. Okay. Um, you might sometimes find that the graph is showing many more channels than you're actually using so you, then you can collapse it down like that. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to run the simulation and you can see that all the channels are currently at logic low, which they are because data is zero or low, clock is low, output queue is low. If, for example, I bring the data high, hopefully you saw that I could bring the data high, but it made no difference to channel two channel 2 being the output Q. If though I bring the data high and I take the clock high, did you see what happened there? It's, uh, I've just right clicked it just to pause, but the, uh, this red line here which is the, uh, uh, which is the data, so I, I brought the data to logic high and then on the rising edge of the clock and that was only a very momentary thing on the rising edge of the clock because then I, I just basically blipped the clock uh, high and then low but on the rising edge of that clock that data that high data input was then transferred to the output queue. Um, I then later on released the uh, my finger from the uh, from the data switch, therefore taking the data input to a logic low again, but it made no difference at all to Q because remember data is only uh, transferred or the whatever's presented at the data input is only ever transferred to the output Q on a rising edge of the clock. So it's actually quite nice uh, having this um, because you can monitor things. And uh, yeah, I think you might find that rather useful to try. 
So uh, one last thing now, um, if you're one of my students and you are going to build a circuit like this, or maybe some other thing, uh, you might find it a little bit difficult finding uh, this, uh, the D-type flip-flop. And I've used one that comes from the CMOS 4000 series. And you can find that by going into Integrated Circuits 4000 series. And it's there. OK. Now, this um, is probably the most common one. And if we use the, actually use an integrated circuit, a D-type flip-flop, it's most likely to be this one. Other ones exist. For example, you can go for the TTL logic type. Uh, and I presume there's going to be one under the 7400 series. Uh, hopefully, I am maybe prove myself wrong. Um, there we go. There's a dual D-type flip-flop there. OK, but we tend not to use that one. So um, if we're actually going to ever do a practical making circuit with this, then it's most likely to be this the CMOS 4000 series. And the CMOS 4000 series, I've just uh, previously Googled the data sheet for it. So this we have to do just just do a Google for something like CD 4013 or you could search for 4013 PDF. It will open. You'll, you'll find it. Uh, and you'll find if you have a look down, I know it's intimidating looking through these data sheets. Absolute maximum ratings, the things you should never exceed. And then there's a recommended and you'll see the supply voltage is recommended between three and 18 volts. A word of warning in circuit was that this voltage, which is used for my inputs, is not the supply voltage. If you want to set the supply voltage, so it's got like hidden voltage rails on this that you can't see in your circuit. To find those, you need to go into project, simulation, power supply, and that's where you can change it. Now, remember anything between three volts, what was it, three volts and 18 would be acceptable. OK. Right. Hopefully that's useful. Um, please comment if you've got a question. And uh, it really helps if you could uh, click the like button and subscribe. So thank you very much.